Hi guys, I'm back and today we're going to make ourselves a cheap home server um, which is going to be quiet and doesn't require any fans. What you're going to need is some motherboard spacer screws, you're going to need some motherboard fixing screws or case fixing screws, a USB plug, a micro USB lead, uh, so it's micro USB to USB lead, uh, a SATA drive if you intend to, if you need the space, the SATA to Cubbyboard 2 connector. The Cubbyboard itself, or this is Cubbyboard 2. You'll need a micro SD uh, and SD converter card if you're going to use it, and a case. I will chuck all of the links to this in the description. Um, first of all, put the spacing screws through the bottom of the board. This stops the pins getting bent. Then you're going to need to once you put them in draw holes in the bottom of the case um, and screw through as you can see i've now put mine in and cut holes for the power hdmi and network and the same for the sata drive place it on there draw draw drill through them and screw them in place this is just to secure the board and the sata drive from moving and you know coming unmounted and you don't want any contact between any pieces of metal and your board so as you can see, this is the SATA pin and that's the SATA power. Uh, I'm now going to connect them together. As you can see, I've now connected them together and I've snapped the case shut. Uh, nice and strong. Uh, as you can see, I've cut the holes for the different sockets, USB and the network and the micro USB that I'm going to use to power it. So that's that done. We're now going to flash the NAND, which is the onboard storage, with our Lubuntu server image. Um, the link for the Lubuntu server image will be in the description, as well as the Phoenix suit tool I'm using to flash it. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to hold down the power and the debug button at the same time until the board turns off and then turns on with only one red light. You'll get this message pop up, which just ignore it, and then you update the firmware. So put yes and wait. It will take some time. Sometime later, I don't actually know how long. It took about five to seven minutes. And as you can see, it's now coming to the end. So it's completed. Your board is now flashed. Your OS is now installed. Happy days. Nice and easy. So I've now plugged it in and it's starting to boot. And as you can see, I've stuck the network and the power in one end, and it just keeps it nice and neat. So now we're hunting for it. I'm using advanced IP scanner, and as you can see, there is two ports open here. Port 80 and port 21, which is 80 is HTTP, and there's the default page. 21 is SSH, and that's how you're going to control your little server, your little home server. So we're now going to use PuTTY to connect over to our home server and we're going to use the default login credentials which are actually in the description. Um, root has a random password and no one seems to know it. So we're going to reset Root's password in a minute. So we're just going to log in and uh, we're going to type in the command sudo passwd and that is going to, sudo is going to make us the uh, root and then we're going to reset the password whilst we're root so type that in make sure you spelled it right and type in your password and now reset the root password and confirm it and we're done now we're going to close party and we're going to reopen it and sign in as root and that is pretty much it your home server is ready to go for whatever you want to use it for it comes with Apache installed, so you could just use it straight out of the box as a HTTP server. But I'm going to use mine as an uh, own cloud server for home. So the SATA drive is needed, large amounts of storage. And here it is, uh, up and running. And it's dead quiet. So once again, the links are in the description. Check out the blog for any additional information. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash a like button. And until next time.